Hello, everybody, and welcome to this webinar with MBDA. I'm really pleased to be joined by Elsie, Early Careers Recruitment Advisor, and we'll learn all about the application process, give you a head start with hints and tips, and this year we'll be hearing from placement student Tom, degree apprentice Sam, and grads Chelsea and James. They'll tell us all about their journey so far at MBDA, the sort of thing that they've learnt, the projects that they've been working on, and what the, the future has in store for them. So Elsie, I'm going to come straight over to you, if I can, um, and before we dive in and meet everybody else. So could you give the audience a bit of an overview to who MBDA is, please? Yeah, absolutely. And I just wanted to say thank you all for joining us. Um, we are MBDA, so I hope you get some really interesting information out of this webinar. Um, as I've said, we're MBDA. Um, we are a European defence country uh, company operating, operating across the UK. Spain, Germany, Italy and France. Um, we have about 13,000 employees across those sites, which is great. We see huge. We, yeah. Yep, absolutely <laughs> huge. Um, and we operate about 45 products in our portfolio at the moment. Yeah. So our leading customer is the MOD, I would say, the Ministry of Defence in the UK. Yeah. However, we have lots of export customers too. So mm -hmm. um, we support our sovereignty as the UK, but also um, the sovereignty of our allies across Europe and across the world. Um, current, currently, we have about 200 new starters in our early careers programmes across each year. So annually, over 200 join us, which is an amazing amount. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and we've won a couple of a couple of awards very recently, um, but many awards over the over the years on um, becoming the best employer. Brilliant. Thanks, Elsie. And Elsie's actually just finished um, the graduate programme, haven't you? You were doing the um, project management. So Elsie's chosen yeah, to go into HR. And um, so Elsie's kind of got a similar background to everybody else, you know, and come to the other side of the graduate programme as well. And um, so just thinking about MBDA as, you know, the future, your future plans, what have you got in store that you can share with us? So the future of the business is huge. Mm -hmm. um, Advances in technology mean that MBDA just strives every year to meet meet those expectations of our customers and of the world with advances in technology. Yeah. Um, so we also have a program called Team Tempest, which is kind of the future of defense, where we work in partnership with companies like Rolls-Royce, I'm sure yeah. you've heard of them, mm -hmm. um, BAE Systems, Leonardo, um, to work on this future, what this future capability. Yeah. Um, so MBDA is growing every year in terms of employees, um, but also in terms of our orders and people wanting wanting our products. Mm, so the future the future is very bright for MBDA and the people within it. Yeah, I know since I've started to work with MBDA, I'll see years and years and years, over a decade ago now, every your early careers has grown continuously year after year Absolutely. after year. Um, and this year, you know, you're recruiting degree apprentices. Um, placement students and graduate uh, graduates as well, which are all open on your hub on Gradcracker. So don't forget after this webinar to go and take a look and get your applications in. And um, Elsie, I'm interested in your background because it is a little bit different. So just tell us about your role now. You know what you get up to, and do you get to meet the students when they apply to your opportunities? Yeah, absolutely. So I joined MBDA just over two years ago now, um, coming straight out of university doing a business degree and went on to the project management apprenticeship. Yeah. Um, lots of you may be here on the webinar having an engineering background, which is absolutely fine. You can still be part of um, the business side of things. And same here, I can still be part of the engineering side of things. Yeah. Um, so I am now in the early careers recruitment team yeah. as an early careers advisor. And what's great about MBDA is that those teams that um, introduce you to the company onboard you and you actually when you join the teams that work with you on a day to day basis, you mm -hmm. do get to see them throughout the whole recruitment process and when you join as well. So we're very interactive with our uh, with the candidates that we recruit um, and like to see smiley faces. Yes. Um, so <laughs> it's, it's a very personable process when you yeah. when you join MBDA. That could be a good tip. Make sure you smile at Elsie when you see her. <laughs> I, I will definitely smile at you first. <laughs> oh, that's what it's all about. Um, and 
from so you've got kind of um both points of view lc so training and development i know it's really important to mbda as, yeah. as, as a business so from you know your your new hat you know as in early careers in recruitment and also from your existing hat as a graduate what kind of um training and development opportunities are open and, and why is it so important to mbda as a business Okay, this is why I love the early careers programs. And this is why I love talking about them too, because I feel that you have, however long your program is, whether it's a year, two years, four years, you have an extensive time for to focus on your development. It's all about yeah. growing new skills and developing as, as a person. So there's a couple of areas that I'll focus on. So the yeah. actual when you think of development, those development courses. Um, on all of the early careers programs, we run development courses, whether that be um, in person as a residential, where you go up to the Lake District and you do outdoor activities and team building, mm-hmm. um, as half day workshops um, to focus on your personal development. There's also things called, um, we run a session called Generation Healthy Minds throughout your whole programme. So it focuses on your well-being while you're on the Early Careers programme and as part of your team building too. So we're kind of focusing not just on your skills that you can put into your your day-to-day role, Mm -hmm. um, but also you personally and making sure that you're having a good time on the Early Careers programme and getting the most out of every placement that you would do. Mm -hmm. And then we also have lots of online online opportunities too so Mm -hmm. it depends on your role and what you want you can kind of tailor your learning to what you want by going through our portal called you learn where you can take on lots of different courses online courses depending on what you want to specifically develop in so a lot a wide range of in-person virtual and um courses available while you're on the scheme and And after well, yeah, I was just going to ask that, Elsie. I'm guessing when you were yeah. on the scheme, um, you didn't. Is am I right in saying that you didn't really know what you wanted to do after? That's why you did so many different rotations, experienced so many different areas of the business to then choose, you know, HR and early careers. Absolutely. So yeah. the scheme, all of the schemes, no matter which one you do, give you a huge insight into MBDA as a company. Um, yeah. It can look quite complicated from the outside. When we talk about defence, it can come across quite daunting. Um, mm-hmm. I went in with no experience of engineering and no experience of actual a business. I'd never worked in a big business like MBDA. So it has something for everyone. And if you don't know what you want to do, I'm sure by the end of your scheme, you'll have a really good grasp on that and then yeah. can move forward after your scheme into an area that you're really passionate about and that you want to pursue as your career. Perfect. And one last question to you, Elsie, before we go on and meet everybody else about misconceptions. So you 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 could have had some misconceptions about MBDA before you um, applied to the grad scheme or just by speaking to students and graduates. What kind of misconceptions do you come across that you um, want to cover as part of this webinar? I would say um, the main misconception I'd like to mention is probably about that area of um, what experience you would need. People think that, oh, I need to have a background in the armed forces. I need to I need to read world news every single day. I need to have a real good grasp on defense as an industry, which is absolutely not the case. There is something for everyone in the business. So um, like me in HR, I don't need to know about the exact workings of defense systems. but I can still be part of MBDA as a company. So I'd mm-hmm. say I'd say that's the that's the main one. So there's something for all STEM students, business students out there as well. And there's something Absolutely. for everybody. Absolutely. Perfect. Thank you Got very it. much, Elsie. Got it. Um, Okay, so now we're going to move on and meet the rest of the panel. So we've got a bit of a mixed bag on the the webinar today, um, which I'm really excited about and excited to introduce you to everybody as well. Um, So Tom, to start with you, you are currently an undergrad on a placement with MBDA. Um, So could you just tell everybody about which university you're currently studying at and what you are studying? Uh, yeah, so I'm doing aerospace at Uni of Sheffield. Uh, I've finished my third year, and after this placement year, I'll be going back for my master's year. Perfect. And is it beneficial? This is a very leading question. Is it beneficial, <laughs> would you say, to do a placement? Um, yeah, of course. I mean, it, it's tough enough to get a job in, in the world at the moment. Anything's going to help. And, yeah. you know, a place it's taught me a lot that I 
didn't know I'd need to know. Like uh, what? Give, give me, you're not getting away with that, Tom. Give me an example. <laughs> so what are you going to go back to university with and you think, oh, yeah, I wish I'd, uh, you know, I'm glad that I know that now. That's going to help me in my um, final year. One of the big ones is just application. So like mm -hmm. it's easy and you need to get caught up in in sort of you know theoretical examples and and yeah. you know I I know all the formulas whatever but mm -hmm. actually applying it to real world it, it is slightly mm -hmm. different to to what you do at uni and it's just nice to have a better understanding uh, of of what's actually being done with with the work. Yeah, definitely mm -hmm. hands-on experience as well as the practical. Yeah. Thank you very much, Tom. And Sam, you're a degree apprentice at MBD MBDA. Um, so what made you choose to go down that route? Um, and what's your current role, please, at MBDA? Yeah, sure. So afternoon, everyone. Um, so I'm a final year uh, sales and business development um, degree apprentice. Yeah. Um, so I focus on the business side of things, specifically sales. Um, so I chose um, to go down the apprenticeship route, you know, mainly, I think the the obvious benefits are, you know, study and, and work on the, learn on the job. Um, yeah. You get your degree funded, which uh, is, you know, one of the key yeah. drivers for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. um, I think for me, I always knew that I wanted to go quite far in my career. Yeah. And upon leaving sixth form, I thought, right, how do I, you know, what's the best way to go about that? And, you know, I think getting a head start on your career, getting those four years experience as you finish your degree, um, you know, it, it gets you that gets you the the higher, the more the more senior roles quicker, I think. So um so yeah, yeah that's why. Oh, and you're planning your future already. And Sam, yeah. so where, where are you where are you based in and which university are you affiliated with? Yeah, so um originally I'm from up north, um in the northwest, as you probably tell by my accent, but wrong side um, of the border, wrong side. Yeah, wrong side, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I um but I, I moved down moved down to Stevenage, uh, which is yeah. where the the head office is. Uh, yeah. We do have a site in Bolton. It's more manufacturing operations um, style stuff, but more of the, the business and, and and software development and stuff is is in Stevenage, um, yeah. which is in Hertfordshire. Um, mm -hmm. And I study one day a week at the Uni of Hertfordshire. Brilliant. Yeah, been to your yeah. site at Stevenage, and it is it's a it's a big place, isn't it? I think I got lost a few times. Um, and yeah. so yeah. thank thanks for that, Sam. Um, Chelsea and James are grads. Um, so Chelsea, come, coming over to you first, tell us about your background. So where did you go to university and what did you study? Yeah, hello everybody. So I did a B and in Mechanical Engineering at Coventry University. Yeah, lovely. And your current role at MBDA? So I'm a Systems Engineering graduate. Super, thanks Chelsea. And we'll find out more about your role, what that includes a little bit later on when I hand you into the capable hands of Sophie. Um, but for now, James, that's, thanks Sophie. For now, James, last <laughs> but not least, tell us about you. Cool, so uh, yeah, I went to the uh, University of Kent. Uh, I did Electronic and Communications Engineering, uh, BEng, and yeah. I'm currently in Electronic Engineering as a graduate at MBDA. Yeah. Lovely, and how long have you been there, James? So I did an undergraduate placement, so technically I've already been here one year. Yeah. Um, I've been at MBDA now since uh, September, uh, September. Perfect. Okay. Just uh, over a year. We'll say over a year and a bit, yes, we'll say. exactly. Thank you. Thank you very much, James. Um, and before we get to know about the roles, we're going to do a top fact round. Um, and we're going to start with you, Tom, your top fact about MBDA, please. Uh, my top fact was going to be that we employ over 13,000 people, but I'm pretty sure that was already Yeah, <laughs> Elsie stole your thunder uh, there, didn't she? I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Uh, my new top fact is that the food in the canteen is really nice. Oh, oh that's a better <laughs> top fact. That's a good one. <laughs> Elsa's thinking, oh, I missed a trick there. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. Good fact. Sam, you're not gonna you're not gonna beat this one now, are you? <laughs> no, I'm not. Mine's a bit more a uh, bit more boring, but um yeah, so MBDA exports to uh 40 countries around the world. Um so it has a very large international presence. Yeah, still like it, it's informative. Thank you, Sam. Chelsea. Yeah, yeah so MBDA has been ranked amongst the top 10 best place to work in 2022 in the UK. Fantastic. And you work there. Amazing. James? Yep. So my top fact is about the fact that uh, it used to be called British Aerospace. So at the time, they had a company a subsidiary called Megat, um, yep. who have currently since separated from the, uh, from the company entirely. Uh, but they actually did a lot of production and testing on the nose cone of Concorde. And in 1974, they actually produced brakes for the Concorde as well, which gave them a lot of weight saving. 
Wow. So, yeah, yeah. For me. brilliant. Thank you, James. Brilliant facts. Um, and Elsie, just looping back to you quickly before we move on, tell us about the roles then. So you've got, I've mentioned before, you've got degree apprenticeship roles, you've got placements, interns, you've got grad roles. Tell us a little bit more about what's on offer. Okay, so um, you've already mentioned Carla, they're all um, available to view on the hub. So please yes. take a look um, <laughs> over there. We do uh, summer placements, like you've said, um, which are 10 to 12 weeks over the summer. We do undergraduate years, which you would start in September and, and finish in about June time. So about 10 months yeah. um, of time within an area of the business. Um, and then we have our degree apprenticeships, which are four years and our graduate schemes, which are two years. Um, all of which allow you to rotate around the business. So depending on how, how long your scheme is, allow, it allows you to rotate around to the, the business into different departments. Mm -hmm. um, what I would say is people to go and take a look at all the different roles on offer. So there's some traditional roles, for example, mechanical engineering, things that people would really recognize. However, there's some untraditional roles, for example, that you might have never heard of. Um, yeah. But might you really might take an interest in, so for example, environmental engineering yeah. um, or human factors engineering, which kind of combines engineering and psychology all in one. So yeah. when we say there is something for everyone, that there, there really is something for everyone. Um, so take a look over on the hub and see what you can find, what interests you and go, absolutely go for it. Um, and on going for it, Elsie, can you, as, as a student, you know, looking at these opportunities, can you apply to more than one or do you have to kind of pick your favourite? Um, I am sure you can apply to more than one. Yeah. Um, however, I would do some research on them. So if you're kind of toying up between mm -hmm. a couple of opportunities, um, I'd, do, I'd do some research, um, yeah. reach out to any contacts, you know, um, that mm -hmm. may be in those roles, um, just to see which one could could really be of something of interest to you. So yeah. you, en you end up applying um, and hopefully getting getting through the process onto, mm -hmm. a, onto a scheme you're, re you're really passionate about. And when you go to the applications um, and to the assessment centres that the assessors can really tell that you've got a passion in that area. Yeah, definitely. Good point. And I think the hub is the perfect place to do that. Obviously, there's, yeah. there's loads of information on there that you can do thoroughly, do your research, including the job descriptions. You know, Elsa just mentioned about those um, maybe different um, opportunities in environmental, um, uh, you know, in the environmental um, discipline or sector. So make sure you do um, do your research before you apply and the locations of the roles are on there as well. So have a good look before you get your application in. But let's hear from everybody else in their journey so far. Um, Sophie, I'm handing over to you. Thank you very much, Carla. Um, so I am going to start with you, Tom, if that's OK, just to find out a little bit more about your current role. So if you could give us an overview about what you do and the team that you work in. Sure. So um, obviously I'm an undergrad. I'm a safety and reliability engineer, uh, which means we're just making sure that everything produced is safe and reliable. And Great. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, a lot of it's making sure that the architecture and stuff that the designers design is not going to blow up when it shouldn't, basically. Yeah, okay, good. <laughs> <That's amazing. laughs> Um, and what, um, how long have you been within this particular team? Uh, so because I'm an undergrad, I only started in September. Yeah. So yeah. about two months and seven days, something like okay, that. Okay, fantastic. <laughs> wow. So relatively new then. <laughs> Fairly, yeah. <laughs> okay, great. Can you tell us um, a bit about sort of what you would do on, on the day to day? You know, and what, what's your normal day look yeah. like? Um, so, you know, get in at nine, mm -hmm. uh, sit down, set up the laptop, all that mm -hmm. good stuff. Yeah, um, have a cup of tea, it, Tom. Have a cup of tea. There's <laughs> always a hot chocolate stuff. <laughs> um, yeah, so most of it is going through. Obviously, I'm fairly junior, so most of it at the moment is going through uh, reports and compiling all the different data and stuff mm -hmm. into sort of a, a more condensed format, uh, mm -hmm. so that that can then go on to be proofread and submitted to the MOD for approval, so mm -hmm. that it can actually be used in the real world. Great. And um, how big is the team that you work in? Uh, the So the overall department has, mm -hmm. I think, 20 to 30 people. OK. Um, but it's split up across each different project. So the team that I'm actually in, it's only a few people at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, but okay. it's a subset of a much larger department and it's fairly flexible with how it's yeah. organised. 
And do you have a, a particular line manager within that team that is kind of in charge of your development then throughout this this yeah. year? Yeah. Yeah. So the the head of safety and reliability is kind of like my day to day manager. And then mm-hmm. I've got the project manager who I also talk to a fair bit, mm-hmm. um, who's, you know, sort of guiding me through the project specifics uh, and helping out on the more technical stuff there. Fabulous. And are there any other placement students in, in your team at the moment, or is it just you in, in that side of the business? Um, I think there's, uh, I think there were two grads, but they graduated last year. Okay. So they're now full-time employees and there was an undergrad the year before me. Mm-hmm. So I think they have one undergrad every year, but. No, I'm currently right. the only one. Perfect. Well, that means you get all the attention then, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Bab, thank you so much, Tom. Um, Sam, I'm going to come over to you. I know you touched upon, you know, your your role in, you know, that you work on the sales yep. and business side. But could you tell us a little bit more about, you know, what that actually involves? Yeah, so I'm currently, um, currently in a placement uh, which is focused on export sales. Um mm-hmm. So we're managing um, a particular customer in a European country um, who has certain requirements. So um, at the moment, my day-to-day role is to um, work with the team, uh, liaise with the customer, uh, understand what their requirements are, mm-hmm. and then actually go back into the business and, and speak to uh, other individuals in other functions um, about what solutions we can provide this customer. Um, mm-hmm. generating it into a an attractive proposal to the customer and um, delivering that to them and then uh, you know eventually negotiating um, and, and presenting that to them um, so that's the the current role that I've got mm-hmm. um, within the degree apprenticeship we rotate every six around around about every six months okay um, so yeah th- this current role that I've got I will be moving on uh, in the new year Okay, because yeah, you've been with them um, MBDA for four years now. Then on the this, yeah, so yeah, this is my fourth year, so just over three three years. Okay, um, so I've I've pretty pretty much done it all within within sales. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. You've done quite yeah. you've done quite a lot of rotations already. Yeah, yeah. So we do. I've I've done about uh, seven, and then mm. um, over the summer I um, was international over the summer um, oh, okay. in a European country. So I actually lived out there for three months. Um, working on a contract and uh, yeah had lots and lots of um, customer interaction interaction engagement things like that Mm -hmm. so I I definitely sort of felt like it it was a big big step but coming out of that you know it's it's like you see you see a different version of yourself because you you really put yourself out there and uh, dealing with uh, international customers is a lot different and uh, Mm -hmm. it poses its own challenges and things like that. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's fantastic. I mean, you've had such yep. a varied experience mm-hmm. already and, you know, being client facing and, and talking to people outside the organization is also a great skill to have, isn't it, to understand how different yep. people operate. Um, so that's brilliant. Thank you, Tom. Um, so I'm sorry, we get, we are going to come back and find out more about some of the kind of key projects you've been involved in, but I'm just going to continue yep. going around everyone to find out a bit more about everyone else. First. So Chelsea, could you tell us um, a bit more about your role? I know you said um, systems engineering, um, but tell us a little bit more about what that looks like on the day to day in the team that you work in. So currently I'm not in systems engineering. Oh, okay. So MBDA, <laughs> um, you do four, six months placements over your grad mm-hmm. scheme for two years. And one mm-hmm. of them can be external. So I'm currently doing my external placement that I started in September. So I've okay. joined the mechanical engineering team as a mechanical analysis engineer. Oh, wow. So I get to work out stresses, um, fatigue, torsional stiffnesses of um, different components within the main product. Okay, I'm not going to pretend that I understand what that means, but I know that a lot. I know that a lot of our audience will people watching this that are a lot more technical than me. Um, so you're on that placement for six months. Yeah. And then you'll go back into systems engineering? Yes, my final place will be in systems, yeah. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Chelsea. Um, And then finally, James, coming to you, could you tell us a little bit more about your role and what you do? Okay, so I work within a data links uh, COFEX and um, in my uh, role, I suppose, within electronic engineering. Um, Mm -hmm. In this six-month placement, so same as Chelsea, um, I will also do three other placements in various teams. I'll only be here until uh, March and then I just work on some uh, testing at the moment for Mm -hmm. uh, some electronic systems and uh, I'll have to see where where it takes me afterwards, if that answers your question. 
no, that's great. Um, yeah. I did want to ask you a, a kind of off topic question, James, because you mentioned that you'd done an undergraduate placement with yeah, MBDA yeah. and then returned as a graduate. So can you tell us a little bit about how that process worked from you know finishing the placement then to, to them returning? Yeah, so I was in my second year and I started looking at companies to apply to. Mm -hmm. uh, in total, uh, to be honest, I only applied to four companies mm -hmm. and um, uh, one of them was BAE Systems. And then uh, another one was a train company and another one did, uh, I think they did water flow valves or something. And then uh, okay. the other one was MBDA. And mm -hmm. uh, I kind of, for me personally, I put all my eggs into one basket, applied to the company, got in, then did the placement. And then mm -hmm. they, it was already on the cards that I would come back to the company. So mm -hmm. it made my final year um, really, really not easy, but it was in, I slept a lot better because <laughs> yes. I had already signed, I had already signed to come back and no, well, this is um, good advice for anybody wanting to do the uh, undergraduate placement. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd already signed the contract to come back before I started my final year of university. Wonderful. And then they gave me an offer. I needed to meet that offer or above. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I got that and uh, came back. Fantastic. That's what I was hoping you were going to say, James, that, you know, you got that offer before you went back to university, because this is something exactly. that we talk about mm -hmm. all the time with our student audience, that not just is it really valuable taking the skills, um, as you were talking about, Tom, of the real world application of your of your degree back to university to help you academically. But it also means that, you know, you may well go back, back into your final year with that job offer, which is just, as you said, you slept a lot better in your final year. <laughs> so um, so that's just something to kind of be conscious of um, as well. If You know, when, with the students that are watching today, they're thinking about doing a placement. You've got two examples here of just how valuable that can be. Yeah. Um, great. So what I'm going to do now is kind of move on to find out a little bit more about some of the, the favourite or key projects that you've worked on. And Chelsea, I'm going to start with you um, to find out more. And hopefully I'll try and understand a little bit more about what, what, you, what you've actually been doing. <laughs> yeah, so the first two placements I've done were in platform integration. So it's how okay. to integrate the product onto an aircraft. So it's wow. a lot of customer base focus, meetings, um, requirements, engineering. Um, model based engineer which is like showing how a product will actually work when it's mm -hmm. being used okay and you've done two of those in the same department yeah. in two different okay. um two different products for the company two different products yeah. great so was that within the same team or was it two different teams that you worked with it was two different teams two different teams yeah. um and how does that work when you're settling into those do you get assigned a new manager each time how does the kind of the management of the rotations work yeah, so you when you do your first placement, you'll get to meet your technical coordinator, which will help you during your placements to sort out new ones or in your current ones if you've got any problems or any issues you want to raise. And you have a meeting with your manager when you first join. He'll take you around the team. He'll get to know you a bit more personally, not just mm -hmm. what you know for work. Yeah. And then during your six months and your first one, you'll start looking at your next placement. Mm -hmm. So you take the coordinator, will talk to you, and they give you names of other managers that you can go and speak to. You just have a catch up in the in the cafe and have a coffee and just talk about what the placement would be, what it entails, who's in the team and stuff like that. So it's never really like pressure to get another place. It's really relaxed with new managers and they'll always be there for you throughout your whole placement. That's great. So you can go to anybody and say, OK, I'm really interested in your area of the business, as long as it aligns with your kind of what you've what you've done um, yeah. and then go into there for your next one. So you can really lead where you'd like to go. Yeah, it's all it's your placements. Definitely. That's mm -hmm. how MBDA see it. it's not they're there just to get you the job and get you in. It's your it's your time to pick where you want to go. They don't force you to go anywhere, which I think is really good. Yeah. yeah, no, that's brilliant. It's um, it's good to know that, you, you know, your opinions and your passions are appreciated and, and what, what you can go really where they take you. So yeah. that's really good to know. Um, I'm going to I was going to go on to um, talking about where you're going to go next, but I think I'll save that for our next round. Um, coming back to you, Tom, can you tell me a bit more about what you've been doing so far and any more detail about the, the particular projects that you've worked on? Um, so, like I said, I've only been here a couple months. Uh, yeah. I did ask my manager. I'm not allowed to talk about the one that I'm actually doing at the moment. Okay, we'll, we'll skip over that doing. one. <laughs> um, but a, a more general one that I would be allowed to talk about is mm -hmm. is just sort of, um, you know, someone like Chelsea might give us as a safety and reliability team uh, an architecture of how things fit together. Mm -hmm. And then it, it's about creating uh, various different diagrams and reports that show that actually those things and how they fit together is safe and it's not going to explode when it shouldn't. Mm -hmm. That's good. Um, um, so do you have to use quite a 
few different types of software. And when you're talking about diagrams, is that all done with different software? How, how have you kind of learned to do all of that? So uh, at the moment, um, the safety team, there's a couple of softwares that we use. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if I'm allowed to say which one, so I'll, I'll leave that for now. Okay. <laughs> um, but there's a, there's a couple of different softwares. A lot of it's just, you know, reports in, in Word and, and using Excel. Um, mm -hmm. But it, it's at a fairly deep level. So it's not the software that's the important bit. It, it's manipulating the data in the correct mm -hmm. way to get the correct result as opposed to just sticking it in a software. And yeah. it really is about understanding rather than just throw it in and hope that the right stuff comes out. Yeah. So I'm guessing you have a lot of support with, with that element of it and, and understanding how to manipulate the yeah. data in the first instance. Absolutely. Um, whenever I have a question, I, I just sort of ping a Skype message to my manager or, you know, one of the other employees in the department and they always get back straight away, sort of run me through it or give me an example of something they've worked on that is similar, you know? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And that's just, it's the importance of asking questions at this mm -hmm. early stage in your career, isn't it? If you're not sure, go to somebody. And it sounds like everybody at MBD is, M MBDA is very, very supportive of the early careers cohort. So I want you to, to yeah, do well. Absolutely. So that's, that's, that's great to hear. Um, Sam, I'm going to come back to you now to find out a little bit more about some of the the projects that you, you've you done, because obviously yep. you have been, have been there a little bit longer than some of our other yep. grads and placements. Yeah, sure. So um, obviously I kind of kind of touched on one before, um, yep. which is a, a particular campaign that we're working on. Um, so getting heavily involved in that. Uh, another project that I can kind of give a bit of a, a top overview on is during my bus actual business development placement. So sort of looking at future requirements, um, are the, the investments that MBD is making into technology, you know, are they actually going to position us in a good way in the market? Are we investing our money in these in these te uh, technologies wisely? Is it going to mm -hmm. be worth it for, for MBDA? Um, so the, the, the actual project I was involved in was defining that um, for the air domain, um, looking at different aircrafts, what are the new aircrafts that are coming through, particularly Tempest? Um, you know, how can we integrate on that? What are customers looking for? in the future um, and, and really making sure that, that what we're developing aligns with um, the, the future market. Fantastic. Um, so you, it sounds like you work with a lot of different areas of the business. How have you yeah. managed understanding the technical aspects of, of MBDA with your particular role? Um, I've not. <laughs> really I, I mean you know I think f the first couple of years of my apprenticeship I didn't I didn't have a clue what was going on uh, <laughs> you, you come in and it's 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 it was a difficult environment to, to kind of get stuck into mm -hmm. but you just got to ask questions and you work on specific things and after mm -hmm. a month or so you you get good understanding and then better yeah. understanding and you move on to your next thing and you learn about a, a new area you know a different type of technology mm -hmm. and then you know, by by your third year, you've got all of these different pillars that have kind of stacked up, and and you can you can get about and you understand it. And I think when you're in sort of sales and business development anyway, you'll always have someone that is more technically sound with you. Uh, mm -hmm. You just kind of need to know the the basics. Um, but yeah, trial and error, asking questions uh, is key. And uh, yeah, don't don't be scared of it, I guess, because you're not expected mm. to know anything when yeah. you go yeah. in. Um, you're a blank slate. Perfect. And I mean, that's that's really good advice. And I think it's, it stands the same for if you're going into a technical role and you do have an engineering background going into the business. Yeah. You're never going to understand every single aspect of what the company does, especially, you know, a, a company such as MBDA with the, on the scale of the things that you do. Yeah. Um, so I think that's really good advice that, you know, ask questions. If you don't understand it, you're not expected to know everything. So, mm. yeah, brilliant. Thank you very much, Sam. Um, and then finally, James, could you tell us a little bit more about some of the, the things that you've been doing at your time at MBDA? OK, so uh, I've been doing a lot of testing um, and then specifically environmental testing and then I'd write reports up about that and then mm. you relay those to your team and you tell them about what you know what went well what, what didn't go well and you try to re I think what's very vital is relaying information to people as simply as possible because yes. for example your manager he, he's not mm. always uh, going to be breathing down your neck to check on what you're doing so if you make it easy for them to understand they have a much better depiction of what it is that you are actually uh, doing during the test and then that will go to a higher level. So it's always 
good to be clear and concise and very succinct about what it is you're you're doing. Mm -hmm. And when you say environmental testing, can you explain a little bit more about what that is? Oh, I can't, I'm afraid. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I knew you were going to say that, I thought, you, I thought you were, but I thought I'm going to try anyway. Um, okay, no, but I think that's good advice about um, relaying information in a concise way. It's yeah. it's a very good skill to have um, because you never know what the type of um, level of pe person that you're going to be mm -hmm. dealing with. They are technical, etc. cetera. Um, so that's um, really good advice there, James. Um, what I want to find out now from everybody is just a little bit more about what the future is looking like um, either after your placement or, you know, after you roll off the programmes. So I'm going to come back and start with you, Tom. What What's the future looking like for you at MBDA? I mean, just top level, you know, what would you be doing on the rest of your placement and then what do you hope to achieve after that? Um, so for the rest of my placement, it's it's mostly the same. Uh, a lot of it depends on how this first project goes and, and whether we follow up on that. So I, okay. I don't really know exactly where that's going to go. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of after that, pretty much hoping to follow James's path. Yeah. Uh, hopefully in a few months they decide they like me, they give me an offer. Excellent. I go back to uni, you know, get my degree, do super well, obviously get a first and all that. Yes. Uh, and then <laughs> come back here. Oh, fantastic. Uh, that's the dream. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, lovely. Oh, no, I was, hoping, I was hoping that's what you're going to say. And yeah, um, yeah, hopefully the rest of the placement goes really well for you. Um, <laughs> yeah. And Sam, coming back to you, what what um, is happening with the rest of your, when do you kind of finish the scheme and then what do you want to do after that? Yeah, so I've uh, I've got my final placement um, I, in the new year. Um, so I do that for, um, I, think, I think it's only going to be about four or five months. Um, mm -hmm around the time when I finish my degree as well so you know thank god I'll, I'll have that out of the way I don't have to be doing uni work after after work and things like that which is always mm -hmm. um always a struggle um mm -hmm. so yeah fi finish that and then um after speaking with my technical coordinator I think this summer um they're going to put me into a shareholders uh, office for for three months okay. so get um get a new understanding of um you know whether it's BAE or Airbus or Leonardo and um, mm -hmm. build my network there and then after that um go into a, into a, an actual role and uh, be a real boy I guess and not an apprentice <laughs> um, so yeah um obviously that will be within uh, sales and business development mm -hmm. um and then yeah we'll we'll see where where it takes me from there and do you have anywhere in mind that you'd any particular department or any particular role that you you really want to do when you come back from that that's a comment yeah so i think um i'm very interested in the export side of things i like that okay. um i like the international travel um and you know i like uh, working with different cultures and things like that um, mm -hmm. it's what sort of grips me into the job in the first place as well they offer international placements in the summer and things like that I knew yeah. I'd be traveling and I think it was always something going into work at a, a young age you know a lot of people do take gap years they go traveling things like mm. that so when I realized that I could do that with work and you know all funded um yeah it was uh, it was a no-brainer really Brilliant. Thanks, Sam. Elsie, I just want to ask you a quick question. Um, do the graduates and well, maybe not placements, but do graduates have the opportunity for international travel as well? Or is that mainly focused on the degree apprenticeship scheme? Yeah, I'm glad you asked that, actually, Sophie. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, Sam's role lends itself to a lot of travel working mm -hmm. with international customers, but it doesn't yeah. kind of stop there. So um, there's people within engineering that have um, joint French programmes that go to that go to Paris every couple of weeks, for example. OK, um, there's yeah, there's opportunities all over the place for you to travel, depending on where your customers are or where your team members are. Um, mm -hmm. As I mentioned at the start, MBDA is, works across France, Spain, Italy, Germany. Mm -hmm. um, so you can actually travel to the MB, MBDA locations across Europe. Um, so the answer is there's lots of opportunity to travel. Doesn't matter what your role is, there will oh. be um, will be some of that opportunity. If that's what you're looking for, it's worth mentioning that when you come in, um, and you yeah. can kind of tailor your placements around that requirement yeah. for you. That's brilliant. Well, that's another thing to entice you into MBDA. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, okay, Chelsea, coming back to you now. Um, could you tell me a little bit more about what the future's looking like for you? Yeah, so it'll be hopefully join the placement in March, but that's not set in stone yet because I haven't decided where exactly I want to go. Got to okay. be my final placement, so when I get the most out of it, Absolutely. and then um, summertime, I'll be looking at 
a fixed job for after the grad scheme at MBDA to decide in what route I do want to take after the grad scheme's over. And have you got any ideas at the moment or are you are you waiting till that final placement to decide? I think I'm waiting for the final placement to decide. I'm still 50-50 with certain roles okay. that I've really enjoyed. So so with your final placement, is there a couple of departments that you kind of want to go into? Can you give us a little sneak peek of what you're thinking? I was looking into um, reliability and safety that, Tom, that Tom's currently oh, in. That was one okay. that I was focusing on and another one called Portfolio which uh-huh. is quite um, high up in the company to work with because it's all documentations of like standards and things like that and new oh, prod- cool. products that could come out in the future. So those are quite wow. interesting to me. So they're quite different, aren't they? Different things that you're thinking. <laughs> okay, well, yeah, hopefully, you decide, <laughs> hopefully you decide the next few months then before, before March and then, yeah, be excited to see where you go with MBDA. Um, and then, James, finally to you, um, what does your future look like? So I think for my next uh, placement, I will go to maybe a test evaluation verification or to safety systems. Um, Mm -hmm. So I will talk to them and see what I think. Um, And then for my third placement, you normally go external. Mm -hmm. And for me, uh, something on the cards is going to Germany. Um, I also speak German, so that really helps. And uh, we'll see how that goes. It depends on, again, whether they uh, have space on the project and are willing to take me on. Um, but I think having the language definitely helps because mm-hmm. when you are in one of these countries, it's great to yeah, be out there. Uh, mm-hmm. But if you can't integrate well enough, then that's a, it's going to mm-hmm. be difficult. Yeah. So that's another great example of, of international travel there, isn't it? So yeah. thank you very much, James. Um, OK, what I want to do now is just move away a bit from the day job aspect to MBDA and talk a little bit more about what else is on offer um, and different things that you get involved in. So, for example, if there's any networking groups, social events, sports. Um, so, Tom, I'm going to start with you um, just to find out about your experiences of that. Yeah. Uh, so the first one isn't networking, but there's a, a group within MBDA called Hive. Uh, they take sort of external MOD documents, you know, whether that's about what the MOD is looking to buy or, or, you know, reports on different countries, and they sort of create short summaries for, you know, top management. Uh, so I'm mm-hmm. part of that. Great. Uh, and I also do the, I don't know if it's official, but the MBDA Hockey Club, uh, oh, which lovely. is on Tuesdays. Fab. <laughs> so nice is that... I have um... to work to meet people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's great. Um, so is it quite social um, when you do the hockey? Do you all have drinks and stuff like that afterwards? Yeah, so, and... um, yeah usually sort of after training, you know, six or seven, um, we'll go to the pub, have a couple of drinks together. Nice. Um, and it's people from all up and down the business. There's people three, four levels my senior that in the pub were just chatting and getting to know each other. It, it mm-hmm. is really just a friendly atmosphere. Yeah. And again, it's a great way to network around the business doing something yeah. like that and find and meet people from different departments. So it's great to get involved in, in that type of thing, even though it doesn't sound like it's work related. But, you mm-hmm. you know, you're networking with people in the business all the time. Um, thank you very much, Tom. Um, Sam, over to you. What sort of things have you been involved in at MBDA? Um, so, I mean, sort of external from the day job, um, we do a lot of uh, career fairs and things like that. Um, I think on more of what I would describe as the fun side, um, mainly just going for drinks and things like that with my fellow apprentices. Uh, you know, we always have Christmas parties in, in the early careers program. Mm-hmm. Um, there's been a few house parties and things like that. So, yeah, uh, I think, you know, we're all we're all good friends and it's, it's usually very sociable. So I think outside of work, it's, it's mainly mainly going out for drinks and uh, yeah. <laughs> food and things like that yeah <laughs> nice um but it is important to have that social mm. connection with people that you it work is. with as well um yeah you know you spend is. a lot of time with these people so you need to you need to have friends there as well don't you Sam <laughs> yeah the thing is you're all in the same boat as well when you're an apprentice because mm. you mm. we all do the same degree we're all you know just just in that same pool of of having lots on at a young age so it's nice to just just relate and uh, yeah you, you need to uh, you need to have friends like that yeah fantastic no I, I completely agree um right Chelsea coming to you could you tell us a little bit more about your experiences yes yeah, so I have quite a few things that are not part of my day job but they do like clash with everything I do as well so I'm part mm-hmm. of Ignite committee mm-hmm. so just to explain what that is to everyone it's an early careers event that's hosted by early careers people so like grads apprentices placements okay. as well um it's just a day event that we hold every six months where it's just like a networking event so all the grads can meet 
all the other grads and apprentices can meet new people oh, nice. and we have like yeah. a few like, games just to get people involved and then we have a few talks and like other departments to come and talk to you about what they do so it could help you get another job in your other placement yeah. and things like mm -hmm. that um i'm also part of a new starter integration team so this is um where new starters join that aren't ecp related so just like level threes and above that join the company so mm -hmm. help out with their training so get them all booked up on what they need to get done before they can actually like get started with their day job and then mm -hmm. we do something called like roadshow every six months at every site in the uk mm -hmm. so it's mm -hmm. just them to network with each other get to know each other what the company offers and societies and things like that mm -hmm. and then i'm also part of something called robot rumble which okay. if you're from half this year people might know what that is so it's like <laughs> schools get involved and build robots and compete against each other on like a little course oh, brilliant. Mm -hmm. so that in my first grad year I was just part of the mentoring so I went to the school helped them build the robots and like supported them throughout the whole journey and then this year I'll now be a super mentor which is just organizing the event organizing the schools and all the mentors for the schools as well that's brilliant what a great way to, to get kids mm -hmm. encouraged in going down a stem route um, and are you given time by MBDA to go off and do that um, that sort of thing is yeah yeah, during, yeah they yeah. do allow it yeah that's really good um I was going to ask you, you've, you've touched upon a couple of things there, Chelsea, that are kind of more organised. Obviously, you're involved in the organisation yeah. of them. But is there kind of, I know, and Sam mentioned about Christmas parties, is there kind of a formal social, um, like events timetable for graduates and in, in year in industry throughout the year? Or is it more organised by yourselves? Um, there is events that go on um, ECP wise, like the Ignite things more, not, it's not too work based, but it does yeah. have a bit of work structure. But mm -hmm. systems lot, they do um, monthly catch ups, like they go to London for the evening and just play darts, pool, and just have some fun to get away from that work exposure. And we've yeah. got loads of societies like shooting, hockey, football. That's just good yeah. just to mess around really and have a bit of yeah. fun outside of work. No, that's great. Thank you very much, Chelsea. Um, and then finally, with you, James, um, can you tell us a little bit more about? anything that you've been involved in so uh for the time being i uh have been thinking about joining the yoga society here on the that's linked to work uh, i'm in a different one at the moment in stevenage but that's my interest mm -hmm. uh, uh other than that i'm going to probably look at joining the scuba diving um society at work as well but, oh, uh, wow. where, where on earth do you go scuba diving in stevenage <laughs> No, no, uh, no, not Stephen. You'd have to travel somewhere. But um, I'm okay. going to Cornwall later today, and I know they probably do some scuba diving in Cornwall. I've been there before, uh, mm -hmm. so I have to see what the group um, are up to and where they like to go uh, scuba diving. But if it's in a pool, I'm not going because that's boring. <laughs> <laughs> Well, there's a oh, huge variety of things there. Massive that variety, yeah, yeah, of different things of everyone getting involved in. Um, I wouldn't, I didn't expect you to say scuba diving. Um, <laughs> following on from yoga as well. Yoga, I know, diving, <laughs> quite different. <laughs> oh, brilliant! No, it's been really great hearing about all of your experiences so far. I know we're going to come back to Carla and Elsie now just to find out a bit more about the recruitment process and stuff like that. But yeah, it's been it's been fascinating hearing about your journeys and the sort, the sort of things that you've been involved in so far. Perfect. Thanks. Uh, thank you, everybody else. Um, Elsie, so we've inspired students, graduates, degree apprenticeship people to apply to the opportunities which are on offer at MBDA. Um, so tell us about the recruitment process. What's in store for them? OK, so it's a three part process, I would yeah. say. Um, what I would um, say as well is that it's a time for um, the candidates to get to know the company as much as it is for the company to get to know to get Correct. to know them so yeah. so it's a process that's used both ways at MBDA um, and we're quite passionate about getting that across that we mm -hmm. want it to work both ways for, for everyone um, so it starts off with an online application as, as always so you apply for a role and depending on which which role you apply for there's a question that changes slightly um, to justify as to why you want to apply for that role um, there's then an online strengths based assessment. So that's um, an assessment that you would do. Um, it gives you a chance to learn about MBDA and a bit about of our culture as well, how it actually feels to work at MBDA. So again, that time for the candidates to understand what MBDA is like, as, as well as us to understand the strengths of our, of our candidates. Um, and then the final stage is a virtual assessment centre. 
Um, it's an interactive assessment centre though, so it would be on a platform like this, like Zoom, um, and it would bring along people from the business um, who are actually hiring hiring people for those roles. So you would be able to see people that you would probably interact with when you're actually in the business, maybe your managers, um, and they would be the assessors. So um, aside from that, you'd also get to meet some of the early careers um, program members like the people on the call today so mm -hmm. it would give you a chance to engage with people around the business of or, or on the early careers programs and in the departments you're applying for and then if they are successful your are they your placement start in june time and then your september. graduate opportunities the both start in september so your placements and your graduate opportunities start in september ah sorry sorry just to clarify so the um, graduate schemes apprenticeships would start in september yeah. So with kind of like the academic year. Yeah, makes sense. Um, yeah. And then the, the summer placements would start as soon as people have kind of finished university. Um, mm -hmm. So in June time, in June yeah. time throughout the summer. Um, and mm -hmm. then the graduate, the graduate placements usually start about September as well. Yeah. OK, fantastic. Thanks, Elsie. Um, so apart from smiling, what other yeah. hints and tips would you give to students who are going maybe going through the application process or just about to start you know what what would you recommend to our students it's a good point about the smiling and I would say one of the things is about being authentic so being yeah. your absolute self if if you're your smiley self um people really warm to warm to you quickly and when you're yeah. going into these recruitment processes you want to show who you are you mm -hmm. don't want people to employ the person that you're trying to be really professional yeah. um you want to they they want to employ you for you so yeah. um be authentic and be yourself and don't be afraid afraid to to be that either um yeah. and i'd say take time to do your applications so mm -hmm. i understand the stress that uh, goes on when you're yeah. kind of in university you're coming out of university you're unsure about the future it's easy to kind of just quickly go through applications and um kind of tick them off the list and say I've applied for that I've applied for that but really take time do some research research show your passion towards passion towards getting involved in a company like MBDA even if it's not specific to the role um mm -hmm. your passion can come across in your application so kind of let that happen let that flow yeah and I know a lot of employers like um our students to mention that they've, they've watched these webinars as well because it does show you know that they've, they've gone above and beyond to do things like this and be involved in the webinar and um, so once the the students grads degree apprentices are, have been successful Elsie when you've when you, they have started are there, are there any hints and tips you would give them during the um you know, first couple of months would you say absolutely so I hope that the um, the apprentices, undergrads and grads that are on the call now have given an insight onto all the, into all the opportunities available. Um, the running theme, I would say, about all of those things is the networking opportunity. Yeah. So during the scheme, you kind of have this concentrated time um, of where the company wants you to go above and beyond your day to day job. They mm -hmm. want you to have fun. They want you to enjoy yourself and they allow you the time to do that. So absolutely, yeah. as soon as you come into the company, as of that first day, when you go onto your induction and you're really worried about meeting all these new people, um, just embrace that. Absolutely embrace it. Yeah. Um, and we've mentioned about this as well um about questions asking questions being unsure yeah. about kind of what you're going into and i would say that no everyone says it all the time you never really believe it until you're into it in a situation you need to believe it but no no question is a stupid question yeah, mm. yeah. so yeah. come into the programs knowing that you know the absolute minimal at that point but by yeah. the end of your program you're going to know so much and you're going to sit there and reflect and think how does my brain hold this in much information <laughs> yeah so really embrace that um and just accept that you're not going to be an expert when you join no one is no one expects you to be but ask all the questions you can i think sam in particular got that point that that point across really well and um, mm. when you were talking sam about you know your, your journey so far and then yeah. you know you thought, thought for the first couple of years what what, what on earth's going on and then it all just clicks and you think now wow yeah. everything that i know it's, yeah. it's, it's really, really comes to my head. Like that. yeah and um, and then 
Elsie, you know, similar question to you again about key benefits. We've spoken about some of the huge benefits at MBDA. So the training that you offer, the experiences, the kind of the away from the nine to five experiences that everybody touched on as well. But specifically as, as an ex-grad and now somebody who's in recruitment, what would you think, what would you say are the, the main benefits um, to younger people joining MBDA? So the benefits can come um, from financial incentives. Um, some yeah. people would class those as benefits, um, but I'd also say the development opportunities are the, the benefits as well while mm -hmm. on the scheme and they continue up off the scheme as well. Um, but also dynamic, work, dynamic working. So MBDA has become a dynamic working company, mm -hmm. which means there's opportu opportunity to be able to work from home and work mm -hmm. on site dependent on your role, which yeah. is an absolute absolutely brilliant benefit i'm sure mm -hmm. um all of us on the call are sat in different places right now um mm -hmm. i'm a couple of hours away from site and mbda allows you to allows you to do that mm -hmm. so i'd say the dynamic working you've got financial incentives so savings in asda and tesco mm -hmm. and yeah. argos which is absolutely brilliant when you're located <laughs> and you need a new, new tv yeah. um <laughs> Things like uh, professional qualification, MBDA yeah. can help to fund professional qualification um, and also work based qualifications. So things like apprenticeships, but level three apprenticeships. So as you're mm -hmm. coming off the scheme, there's opportunity to do kind of leadership, leadership apprenticeships yeah. um, that are accredited by the Institute of Leadership and Management, for example, mm -hmm. that further your personal development off the scheme as well. So it doesn't become a lack of focus as soon as you finish the scheme. Yeah. And just on the financial incentives and um, relocation, does MBDA help with relocating students to your different um, different offices? So depending on where your home, your home base is. So if yeah. you're a Stevenage based um, apprentice or graduate, um, they would expect you to travel to that site. Yeah. However, if you find a placement that's away from your site, so for example, if you're based at Stevenage and you find a placement that you really want to do in Bristol, mm -hmm. MBDA financially support you to move to Bristol for that six month yeah. period or nine month period to take up that opportunity. So it really doesn't limit you if you yeah, want to mm. if you want to do that then and worry about it financially that it might not be viable for you to do it personally. Yeah. The company supports you to do that which is amazing and it's a very common thing to happen actually it's not just a rarity a lot of people a lot of people do that so yeah the world really is your easter isn't it with mbd it really so, is and um, really thank is. you very much elsie and what we're going to do now is just look back to everybody else um, and use the example so you were to start mbda you know first day on monday what would you suggest that we got any hints key hints and tips um, and sam coming to you yeah, so I think um, obviously saying before about asking questions and things like that, but I think another big one is to try and interact with um, sort of the, more, the the senior people in the company as, as much as you can yeah. and almost just absorb as much information from them as possible. Uh, mm -hmm. And, you know, the more they get to know you, the more you'll get lined up for, for jobs in the future. Um everyone that's sort of seen it that I've met they've, they've always been really interested in getting to know the early careers people um, yeah. and you can learn a lot from them um, so I, I definitely say put yourself forward uh, go go for a coffee with them go for lunch with them uh, and even get some some mentoring set up with them um, because it can really help you fantastic thank you very much Sam Chelsea would you say anything different I'll just say if you're nervous it's normal so don't worry about it and yes. just just get to know your ECPs the first few weeks and your team because you'll be with them for six months. And also yeah. just always keep in contact with your technical coordinator because he'll he or she'll be there for you for the whole two years or one year you're with us. Yeah, and everybody will be feeling as nervous as you are. I know when I've been in situations before, you just think, oh, everybody else looks so brave and I'm the only nervous one and everybody feels exactly the same, don't they? And um, thank you, Chelsea. James? Yeah, no, honestly, I'd echo the same thing. Um, yeah. It's that thing of if uh, if you're thinking it, there's a good chance everybody else is thinking exactly. it as well. So yeah. it, uh, it, that in itself has taken so much pressure off of me whenever I'm, I'm in that situation. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's not too much to worry about. Thank you, James. Tom, anything different? Uh, not hugely different, but if you get there on the first day and people are talking about stuff that you've never heard of, the acronyms that you've never seen before, that's pretty normal. Um, yeah. Give it a few weeks and, you know, just from exposure, you'll you'll know them. Mm -hmm. You're not expected yeah. to know everything on the first day. 
but yeah. it's totally normal yeah perfect thank you very much everybody and um, so yeah we've definitely given you enough food for thought everybody out there who's watching to go and apply to the mbda opportunities today don't forget like elsa said at the beginning they've got degree apprenticeships they've got placements internships and they've got graduate opportunities as well so don't miss out get your application in be careful you know consider um, all of the opportunities that are available if something does look a little bit quirky you know like we said about environmental um, opportunities as well take a look you know don't discount yourself and there's lots of opportunities um, to apply for and then you'll have a fantastic career with MBDA you know just look at what's in front of you here and um, about all the experiences whether it's international whether it's in the UK and you know extracurricular activities as well and um, such as scuba diving and yoga who could ask for anything more? And um, so, yeah, get your applications in. Thank you very much, Elsie, Sam, Chelsea, James and Tom um, for joining us today. It's been brilliant. Thank you, Sophie. Next Wednesday, we are going to be joined by nuclear graduates at 2 p.m. And um, so register today to join the webinar next week. And um, but for now, apply to MBDA and look out for the webinar, which will be live um, later on this afternoon. Thanks very much, everybody. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye.